If you've been in an ambulance or had seen an AED in the Midwest, it's likely the Leona and Harry B. Hemsley Charitable Trust paid for it. Now, the group has asked one man to conduct a $3.3 million evaluation on emergency medical services as a whole. UND professor at the Center for Rural Health and professional evaluator, evaluator Ralph Ranger is here to tell us about the evaluation process. Thanks for being on the show with us today, Ralph. Thanks for having me, Avery. So starting off, what kind of got you into evaluating? Oh, how I got into evaluation was a little bit of an accident. <laughs> uh, I think most of us in the field of evaluation kind of fall into, fall into it. Mm -hmm. There is no formal training programs uh, for evaluators. So it usually takes uh, someone along the line to say, hey, are you interested in trying out uh, to be an evaluator? And mm -hmm. you kind of just sort of fall into it that way. So what did you do before you were an evaluator then? I know you said that yeah. you had a different path. Different I had a background. very different path, but I think most people do, right? And yeah. They didn't, don't always have it figured out where they want to go. Mm -hmm. I actually started as a sports psychologist, and I worked with the National Hockey League for four years and oh. uh, worked with the scouting bureau there. and. From there, I uh, had a sort of a research background and took a job in family medicine. There were no jobs for my dream job to be a... Very uh, cool. Yeah, I suppose. Um, so what is an evaluation then, if you had to put it in a nutshell? I don't think I can put it in a nutshell, <laughs> but I'll try to explain <laughs> it as best I can. Big. Yeah. So I think when you think about evaluation, the question I mostly get is, well, what is it that you evaluate? Mm -hmm. And there's different kinds of evaluators uh, out there. And I would have to say that <coughs> the best way to categorize the kind of evaluation I do is program eval and system eval. And so what that means is uh, if we're doing a program eval, mostly uh, the programs I'm interested in are in the health sector. Mm -hmm. I work for the Center for Rural Health. So it makes sense that I would be you know, focused on uh, programs that provide health services. Mm -hmm. And there's three different kinds of things that we usually look at when we're evaluating a health program. Uh, the first would be uh, some general level of accountability for the funder, some simple things, you know, are they servicing the number of people or providing services for the number of people they said they would. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing we would, do, so that helps the sponsor make some decisions and there's some level of accountability there. The other thing we would do for the staff of a program is perhaps help them out. Uh, are they delivering the program the way they want to deliver it? Is there ways that they could streamline that and do a better job? So we can jump in there and give them a sense of um, the information they need to make those ongoing improvements. And of course, the big question that everybody wants to know is, uh, is the program working? Is it making a difference in the lives of, in this case, some of the things that it's you were alluding to earlier? to business. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, so what mm. sorts, of th sorts of things have you evaluated? Is it just health things that you've worked on? I know you work for the Center of Rural Health, but... Yeah, it's been a variety of things that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been, had the good pleasure of working in Zambia uh, in the mining sector. So I worked there. There was uh, several injuries that were happening in the mines, and they wanted to know what they could do about that and how they could improve it and the, whether the interventions that they were putting in place were working. So they'll bring someone like myself in to help them understand what the correct information is to do that. Okay. I've worked in Brazil, uh, in deforestation issues there. So it's an international collaboration. Are they collaborating well was the kind of thing that we were looking at. I've worked in Alaska with uh, seasonal affect disorder, sort of mental health issues, mm -hmm. that kind of a thing. Uh, what, can they, what kind of programs uh, can be put in place to help those folks? And are they on the right track um, with you know, making progress? Is the money well spent? Those would be kind of questions that we would be, would be asking there. Probably one of the more interesting ones actually is working with a cousin of mine in Germany uh, mm -hmm. who does a uh, health economics uh, or more or less a cooking class. Uh, and the whole idea of the cooking class is to build social skills uh, for the kids uh, from a very impoverished uh, area. That's cool. So yeah, so we get to go all over the world. and Well-traveled. It's great. Yeah, I'm very fortunate to have the job I do. So kind of who do evaluations help? You kind of went through the process of mm -hmm. it and what it is, but who does it help specifically the most? I'd say there's probably three different uh, stakeholders that it helps. Mm -hmm. uh, first would be the person providing the money. Uh, they want to have some sense that the money's well spent. Being, used to, being useful, yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, the second would be the, the service providers, the, the staff and so forth that are pro providing those services. Mm -hmm. uh, they would like to have information as to you know, whether they're doing a good job. And of course, the clients themselves and taxpayers want to know whether the money's being well spent. So I would say those are probably the three uh, stakeholders that we work with. Great. So when is it best to conduct an evaluation then? Great question. Most of the time what happens is they come to us far too late in the process. Uh, somebody's already invested in a program. 
and uh, they maybe have a month left and they realize they need to say something about whether it worked. So they will uh, come to us and we're supposed to perform some magic. But the best thing would be if we were involved in the planning phases. We can really help a client understand whether the program they're offering is on target and has a chance even to be successful in the first place. Okay. So getting us involved in the planning phase is a really important thing to do. All right, so what is the average cost of an evaluation then? There's no average cost. It's, uh, it can vary. I've been on projects that have a $5,000 budget and I've been on ones as you described at the top of the show that you know, are in the millions. Mm -hmm. uh, it really uh, usually is a per the cost of an evaluation is usually the percentage of the budget. And so 10% of a uh, working budget is usually what's set aside for evaluation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you typically have a team or are you doing these evaluations on your own? Uh, it'll depend on the size. Uh, right now the, uh, the North Dakota Department of Health and the Lucas Project uh, is a massive undertaking. It's a huge uh, project. Right. Huge project. Huge project. Yeah, it starts with a 911 call so I'll get to your answer about how many people we have. But <laughs> uh, when you get a sense of the size of the, the project then I think you can get an appreciation for how many people are needed. But you know, some, someone picks up the phone and dials 911. Uh, we have to work with the law enforcement dispatchers to see, um, you know, are, what can they do to pinpoint you quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, there's a call out to the EMS services. Uh, usually in North Dakota, it's going to be basic life support. That means mm -hmm. they don't have necessarily the, the, the training uh, to offer, you know, the full extent of care. They'll probably arrange for some intercept along the road and get a paramedic to come. Uh, then they'll probably end up at a, one of our smaller hospitals in North Dakota, a critical access hospital. Mm -hmm. And from there, if they're, hopefully if things are still going well, you get a transfer, uh, transfer or transport to a tertiary care facility. So that whole system, uh, we have to evaluate all components of that, the training that's needed at every level, all the technology that's needed at every level to make that work. Um, seconds are critical in a system like that. If we can save 10 seconds somewhere, it could be the difference between someone save living. Save a life. Exactly. So when you have that many working parts, to answer your question, you need a lot of different people. So we've grown our team. We'll have, currently we have five and we're looking to recruit another four and we'll have hopefully 10 full-time evaluators on this project. It's going to last a, a while too. I mean, I assume this process is going to take, because this is what you're working on now. And how long do they project that this is going to take you? Right. So. Each state, we're starting in North Dakota. We mm -hmm. have five years. And uh, we're bringing that now, the same system. I guess they like what we're doing. So uh, <laughs> they're bringing us on in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be now heading into Wyoming, uh, Minnesota, Montana, Nebraska, and Iowa. <laughs> so those are all the different states that we'll be moving into. So this project will you know, extend for the next five to six years. Well, that's interesting. It's a yeah. long time, too. It is a long time, but, but it's fun. it's a huge project. It's a huge project. We've got great people to work mm -hmm. with. Working with people in the health sector is exciting. We have great sponsors in um, you know, the Helmsley Charitable Trust, obviously, and the Departments of Health and so forth in North Dakota and South Dakota especially in our first year have been very cooperative. So great. Uh, yeah, it's an easy environment to work in when people are motivated and they dream big and, um, and they give you the resources to do it. So we're very fortunate. So my last question for you is, why is this so important? I mean, why is this crucial for a business in their planning stage? Yeah, well, you wouldn't want to go all the way through a program only to find out at the end that it didn't work or you could have done something different. Spend way too much money on something right. that doesn't work. Right, so we can give you information a lot sooner so you can take those corrective actions and, and you know, make sure you don't make those kinds of mistakes. Great. Thanks yeah. for being on the show with us okay. today, Ralph. Great. Thank you.